Well, hello, people of the earth. Uh, today we're going to talk about something very important: uh, debugging your JavaScript smart way. We are trying to figure out what really went wrong in our code. Something doesn't work, uh, and we are trying to track some variable, you know, object. We're trying to figure out what's going on, how is it changing. Uh, it could be asynchronous, or sometimes we can't find uh, our variable. Uh, you know, we all have uh, gone through that and believe me, I've spent endless hours uh, trying to figure that out But we shouldn't do that. I mean uh, there are tools right now available in uh, your browser especially Chrome That are so cool that you can actually figure things out very quickly But a lot of people don't know that so uh, today we're gonna talk about some of the common stuff and some of the tricks uh, that people may may not know uh, where you're doing th something hard way but there is an easier way to do that so let's uh, let's talk about it and welcome to tech seed tutorials so we're gonna uh, look at some uh, basic tricks and then we're gonna do some interesting ones that you may not know so uh, but the, this basic ones are also very important to understand because Oftentimes, uh, we are not using the full potential of even a, a console log. A lot of people uh, do things hard way with console log. Um, but before we start, uh, the one of the first thing I want to mention is alerts. Do not use alerts. They're blocking, they're annoying, and there is not much place for alerts in JavaScript anymore. So avoid as much as possible. I would not, I would say don't use it at all. Console log. Console log is the king, right? We need to use uh, console log in a right way. For example, let's look at it. Um, let's say if I have uh, some variable x equal to 1, okay, now I want to console this. Uh, most of the people will simply do console log x, right? Now the problem with this is that what if you have multiple console log all over your code, then since it's only printing the value, you don't know which one is which. Right? So the best thing to do is put some sort of a label and I usually put something like this, something that you cannot find in your code and X. Uh, the advantage of this would be, uh, let's look at it since we are here and uh, we are inside the JS Fiddle where there are tons of uh, logs. All right, so when I'm, I'm going to run this, uh, but as you can see, there are tons of logs. So which if you are using console log, your value might get lost inside, right? Uh, so if I run this, yeah, I would get a here, but as soon as I do something here, my value gets lost. So the best thing you can do is, um, if you, you, you will have filters here. So I can, here I can simply uh, type a, a, and then my value will be filtered, and I can always get my, and all other annoying stuff won't show up here. Now the cool thing about console log is you can actually track multiple values. So if I have y equal to two, I can simply say uh, x, I can say y, uh, I mean as many as arguments as you like and they would all show up here. I can put another label here. Uh, let's just say z, 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 then I can filter z, z, z and run this and I can see now the two. Okay, so here's another trick. Um, I'm sure you've seen this. Uh, if you've seen my videos, I use it all the time. Um, let's say if I have a function, right? I'm gonna call it f equal to some function. And let's say if I add some prototype to it, uh, prototype dot, let's say I'm gonna call this function to add equal to a function. I'm not going to put the whole body, but so if I console log this function and I'm just going to say f equal to um, f. And if I print this in console, it only shows me the function body, not the, I want to see the prototype because I've added a prototype property. So instead of log, if I use dir, I cannot use uh, multiple arguments, I have to do this way. So I'll just simply do this way. And then I have more details. Um, I can see it's prototype. I can see this uh, add 
a method inside it, right? So this is quite useful. Okay, so here's another trick. Um, let's say if I have some array called A, and then I'm going to say uh, console log A. And let's say if I add something more to it, so I can say add, uh, push, let's say if I add four to it, right? Then I'm going to console log this again. Now I have a before and after, which means if I print this before, it should print three, three elements. If I print after, it should have four elements, right? So let's look at what happens. Uh, so when I run this, yeah, I can see here, but if I expand it, because often this may be a huge object, and I want to expand, so I want to see more information. There I would see all four elements here, four elements here, because there's a reference. Uh, so A, it updates because it updates it, the, the reference. So that's why you see both A, and it can be really confusing. I mean, this is a smaller array, so you can easily see in the top uh, three and four. This would obviously show the right value because this is almost like a output of the, you know, it's like a string version of it, right? Um, but if I expand it, it should show me the real object with indexes where it actually shows the same object before and after. So one trick is I usually do JSON stringify JSON dot parse to both. So because it creates a copy of it, it should have, it removes the reference to the original object now the first object has three elements the second object has four elements which is correct okay so this is the one of the tricks that you need to know now when i when i when you print a, a giant array with ton, with lots of objects right um, using console log is not the right way to do it um, for example let's uh, try to create a giant object and since i don't want to create it here i can just simply use one of the services called json uh, generator all right so by default it shows you a bunch of you know elements and i can generate this creates and i can copy it and then print is here now i want to log it if i use console log it won't be very useful so let's run this since it has so many rows, it's hard to really see. So let's say if I want to see eye color, right? Um, I have to open every single one and look for the eye color here. Here's a blue, here's blue, you know, which is quite annoying. Okay, here's green. So what if I want to see eye color and maybe age of the person, okay? So for that, I can use console dot and the first argument is always the data that I'm passing and then I can pass the, the uh, an array with the field fields that I want to uh, filter out right so here I want to uh, do age and maybe eye color and voila I have a table with indexes ages and eye color okay how cool this is, right? And if I wanna look at the entire array, I can still look at it here underneath. Okay, so this is really cool because it shows you both in one. It would also show you the console log and also show you the table itself. And this way you can isolate things and then uh, analyze it. All right, so the next trick is um, oftentimes you wanna, you wanna know if you run a function, how long does it take to run? Or you wanna put some uh, timer where uh, you can say, okay, uh, I want to know from this line to this line how long does it take to um, to run. So when a benchmark, so I used to do, I used to put timers and I used to uh, create my own timer class and I used to do all kind of stuff, right? Uh, which is kind of redundant because JavaScript provides already provides this functionality for you to do it. Uh, it's much easier. Uh, let's look at uh, set timer, and I can I can create a function. I can say okay, it's gonna take. 5,000 uh, milliseconds to run this code, okay? And we already know that. 
And now I want to know when does it actually runs, right? So anything inside here would run after X, which is five seconds. So what I can do in order to start, I can say console log time. No, oh, sorry. Console, it's a, it's a bad habit to just write console log every time. So console time, and then I would put a label. I can say uh, st for set time on. And then I can say inside here, I can say console. And then I can use the same label because I can use multiple of these. And it would, it would only measure uh, for this label, right? So it will start the timer here and then end it here. And then it will give me how much time it has taken, right? All right, so it says it took uh, 5,003 millisecond and it has some other stuff here too. But you know that it ta it's taking just a little bit more than 5,000. So it's very accurate, right? And again, you can actually uh, create multiple of these, right? I can say else and, you know, so as you can see, something else ran for even less than a millisecond because it's outside the set time up, so it should run faster, right? Okay, so now let's look at our next trick. Now, console log is your friend, but it's not going to help you everywhere. Uh, let's say if you want to stop at specific place and analyze things more, all you know, usually you 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 would print some variables in console log, uh, but oftentimes you want to check the whole environment out. You want to see how much, how, what is the value of this variable uh, while you you know when you stop. So you can actually stop the execution because the console log just prints the value and it just moves on to the next line. It doesn't really stop. So what you see is things that are afterwards, right? Uh, so there is a way to actually stop the execution and then analyze it and move, move forward. Uh, let's look at it. So let's say if I have some variable a, let b, and then I want to stop here somewhere, right? Now I can console log a and b, but instead I can do debugger. If I put this here and run this, it would actually stop the execution at that line. And inside the source code, I can see the values here, right? So I can put, put breakpoints here. Now I can go and put the breakpoints in the code, but this is much easier. Just put, put the debugger inside the code. In the JS fiddle, it's usually hard to find out where the, your code is running because it's some, somewhere it's, it, it creates this environment and your code is running somewhere else, right? So it's very hard to find. This way you don't have to look for it. It automatically finds it for you and it just stops there uh, at that line. Let's say if you wanna test something a website that is already running, like uh, let's say if I want to test something like yahoo.com, right? Um, and then they have tons of JS, right? Uh, and if I knew what JS file I'm looking for, I can simply go here inside the source. One way to do it is if I, I can, I can go and find my stuff here, but often it's very difficult. So I can just do uh, command P and I can do some JS, let's say bb.js, I don't know. Um, so I can search for the JS file that I'm looking for. Once I find it, it could be, you know, minified or something, or it could be some really ugly code. And then there's little pretty prettier. So if I click on this, this line here, and it makes my code um, readable. And then I can put some breaks here. And then I can test, I can debug my code here. Okay, so this is pretty neat trick. And there are tons of stuff here still that I haven't explained. I might make another video, you know, there's performance tab, memory tab, network tab, and each has its own uh, little tricks uh, that you can use. Um, so I might make other, another video. And uh, feel free to share any interesting tricks that you know uh, that I haven't covered here, uh, so I can share with other people, and I'm, and also for for myself since I'm teaching you. If you if you know something, you can you know you can teach me. So, and I hope you learned something from this video. And if you did, please like. Don't forget to like, like, subscribe, and provide a nice comment. And you can also translate this video for me. 
uh, to your native language so your countrymen can also learn. It's pretty easy. I'll provide instruction in the description. And once you translate it, send me a me message so uh, I can approve it and give you the credit in the next video. And also you can help me on Patreon. Uh, I'll provide a link here. And thank you.